Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Keswick Chapel. My name is Robert Wallace. I'm the lead pastor, and I want to welcome you to Tuesday, June 23rd, and our devotion and prayer time. Uh, again, our invitation for this week is from Deuteronomy 33:12. Let the beloved of the Lord rest in secure in him, for he shields him all day long, and the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. Amen. Father, we love you this morning. We ask that you open our eyes that we may see and our ears that we may hear. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word and your truth this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible song is from Psalm 136. I encourage you to read that. And then the Bible reading today is from Galatians 3, 1 through 3, and then 10 through 14. I'm not going to read these passages to you. I will read a little bit. I'm, uh, I'm going to try something different. I want to provide you with some commentary. I want to see what you think about this. And doing it this way as opposed to reading the passage. So what do you say? Let's just start off here now with Galatians chapter 3. I'll read the first couple of verses because I think we're going to see immediately here that Paul's tone has changed. Initially, he was giving them background. He was helping them to remember who they were, where they came from, and what they're reading. And now uh, he's getting to the point, and he's a little upset with the church at Galatia. So here we go. Verse 1, you foolish Galatians, he writes. Who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing in what you heard? It's a great question, and, he's, and he goes on from there. And Again, I encourage you to read the entire passage. But let's talk about this for a second here. You foolish Galatians, you foolish 21st century Christians, who has bewitched you? Was Jesus crucified or not? Why have you co-opted your faith to believe that Jesus is only half of the answer? That's what he's asking here. Our faith is based on the work that Christ did. Our salvation is based on our acceptance of that belief. The Galatians were believing, starting to believe that they had to work for their salvation, that they had to do things in order to be saved. And that's further from the couldn't be further from the truth. That's what Paul's saying. He's saying, You foolish people, we preach to you Jesus and him crucified for your salvation. Not works. Jesus didn't do half the job, and you have to do the other half. The salvation is a free gift. It's freely given. It must be freely received. Then everything else that we do after that is an outflowing of our love and thankfulness for that salvation. Paul is really upset with this church. And so here's our question for us today. Have we co-opted faith in Jesus Christ to where now we're in debt to Jesus Christ, and the only way we can pay for this salvation is by working. Well, here's the clue. We can't earn it. We cannot earn salvation. It is a free gift. It is a gift of God. It is by grace we are saved, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Yes, James tells us that we faith without works is dead. But that's, there's a fine line there between working out of my love, out of my thankfulness, and working for my salvation, working for the grace of God. That's not what we're called to do. God's gift, if salvation is freely given, we must freely accept that. And then once we do, once we realize this wonderful gift has been made to us, then everything we do is flows out of that love. I don't preach the gospel because I feel like I have to. I preach the gospel because I want to. I share my faith because I want to. I want people to know what God has done for me. I want people to see Jesus in my life. What about you? I pray today that you will understand the difference between a debtor's faith, and a faith that is based on the gift of salvation. That's what Paul's calling the church of Galatia to do, to remember 
that these works of Christ were done freely for our redemption, for our restoration with the Father. We cannot earn this restoration. We cannot earn this redemption. We must freely accept it as it was freely given. I found the prayer today from the Belgic Confession 22 to be very compelling. I'd like to read that to you here briefly before we end. Complete God. Who wants a partial Savior? And yet we hedge our bets, often trying to add something to Jesus, as if he is only half a Savior, as if something else will make us more holy, more acceptable to you. Forgive us for what this is, a trampling of your grace. Give us the faith to rest in your complete salvation in Jesus. Amen. I pray today that you will take time to chew on this passage of Scripture today. I pray that if you are guilty, as I have been in the past, of feeling that I have to work for my salvation, that you'll get a hold of this truth today. We cannot work for it. We cannot earn it. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be with us today. Lead us and guide us. Father, help us to take this word, to chew on it, and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and to reveal to us what we need to change. Father, we love you and we thank you for this day. We pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Listen, I would love to hear from you. Feel free to email me, pastorrobert.keswickchapel at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. If you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, please email me and let me know. I'd love to pray with you and to reach back out to you. Have a wonderful day. God's blessings to you. Bye for now.